Sickle cell disease is a major health problem in the war, in, in internationally in, in the world. There are about 240,000 children born with sickle cell disease in sub-Saharan Africa every year. And 80% uh, of those children die by their second birthday. The median survival in the United States in 1975 for sickle cell disease was between 12 and 15 years. Most of those kids died of infectious complications prior to their, their 12th to 15th birthday. And with the implementation of prophylactic penicillin and immunization for pneumococcus, almost all of the deaths from those infections uh, prior to age five were eliminated. Also, the, impl the implementation of uh, standards of practice that involved uh, very aggressive treatment of fever in young children. So currently in the United States and in, in, uh, in Europe, the median, well, about 98 to 98% of children survive to age 20. Uh, those kids have cerebral vascular disease, they have uh, pulmonary hypertension, they have a number of complications, uh, but nonetheless, they're still, you know, they're still alive. So this is a, a, a very, very serious healthcare problem. I've been involved in the uh, clinical management and research uh, in the area of sickle cell disease since about 1991. We have around 350 patients in Los Angeles, mainly children but also adults, uh, in the sickle cell center. Uh, and been involved in uh, NIH-funded research related to sickle cell disease for a long time as well, both clinical and, uh, and, and basic uh, research. I think one of the most probably prominent misunderstandings about this disease is related to pain. Pain is the major manifestation of sickle cell disease. The patients have recurrent episodes of very severe excruciating pain, and the intensity of this pain is very similar to that of bone fracture. And um, they also, most of the time, at least young people, uh, are not in pain. They, they, the sickling process is going on constantly. There's organ damage going on constantly, but then this is punctuated by these episodes of excruciating pain. And I think the general popular, the physicians and healthcare providers that aren't accustomed to working with this patient, these patients don't really appreciate how severe this pain is and that it's very real. And they also don't understand that there are really no physical findings or laboratory findings, no changes in their blood counts and so forth, and not even necessarily not changes in their heart rate or their blood pressure uh, associated with this pain. And this is different than uh, a lot of other people with acute pain, say from a bone fracture, for example. And so there tends to be an I some sense of an I uh, that uh, the pain isn't as bad as what the patients are, are, um, are stating. One of the other things that makes sickle cell disease quite different is there, unfortunately, um, is a fair amount of prejudice in the medical community with respect to the requirement for narcotic analgesics and this idea uh, that this population of patients are uh, drug-seeking. They, in fact, are drug-seeking because they have severe pain. But interestingly, the incidence of true narcotic addiction in this population is no different than the general population. And this is, to me, I think an important point because narcotics are prescribed frequently for their pain. So in fact, the relative incidence of true addiction is much less in this population. Well, there are many challenges associated with this disease. So it's kind of hard for me to answer the question, what is the biggest challenge? The biggest problem, both in pediatrics and in adults, is that this uh, is a rare disorder. Uh, in the state of California, 0.01% of the population have sickle cell disease. So the probability that any healthcare provider has any significant experience with this is close to zero. Um, and there are a lot of fine points to the management of these patients which can be uh, really life-saving. There are patients that die because uh, the medical personnel don't recognize these. And it's not really because they're incompetent, it's because this is a, is a quite rare disorder. And in the adult world, it's even a bigger problem. Uh, in pediatrics, there are more organized sickle cell centers 
In general, this is true in pediatrics for all rare genetic diseases. Uh, and in the adult world, um, these types of centers don't really exist. Um, adult hematologists primarily treat cancer. Uh, this is also true in pediatrics, but really uh, the case in adults. And many um, adult providers have two or three patients with sickle cell disease, maybe, and many none. Um, there are also, uh, as a general problem in the United States, of course, uh, health care and, uh, and accessibility to health care is a problem for everyone. Uh, this is also true with the patients with, with sickle cell disease, and so uh, their ability to uh, get to a doctor at all and have routine medical care is problematic. About 90% of the medical care of adults with sickle cell disease occurs in emergency rooms. So this means there's not any continuity of care. In the family practice office, in general internal medicine office, um, there's not significant experience. Uh, the physicians are under great pressure to see large numbers of patients with diseases that they're familiar with. And so when one of these patients come in, uh, the physicians are very uncomfortable because they don't feel they have the expertise. And these points have been documented in, in large survey studies. This is not just, you know, my opinion. So there are a number of things. Another issue with the population really has to do with, with healthcare disparities and uh, income and so forth. Um, in California, many of these patients live in parts of the state where the housing costs are much lower. Uh, the existing sickle cell centers uh, uh, are not in those areas. They're in Los Angeles or in Oakland. Um, so there are a number of things that make it difficult for these, uh, for these patients.